3,000 subs on YouTube and 4,000 followers on SoundCloud, I'm going to fucking drop dead. So yeah, it's it's kind of it's kind of been a while since since my last uh, tutorial thing. Uh, yeah, it's been like. Uh... What the fuck? What? Anyways, yeah, I've been making sick beats for you guys. And I thought I'd just take a break and make another funny tutorial since I haven't updated it in a year apparently. Uh, I, I also have a merch store now, so that that's pretty cool. Give it up for this dude. Yeah! Woo! Yeah! Link is in description and I'll put it on the screen and uh, yeah, yeah. I've also got a few designs coming up soon. Uh, I don't know how exactly they're gonna look, but here are a few prototypes. Ooh, ah, uh, moving on. So because I have not showed you guys how to make another kick in a uh, uh, fucking year, I'll be showing you how to make not one, not two, not three, not four and a half, not five, five, but five whole ways to make funny, loud, up tempo kick drum with new and improved time stretching methods. Wow. So first, first one, a serum kick. Of course, this is the one for people who actually have serum or have got it through mischievous ways. So let's start up serum. This is serum. This is serum, if you didn't know. And this is the first thing you're going to want to do when you make a, a serum kick is you do this. Turn both of the random knobs down, even if you aren't going to use the second oscillator, you might just want to turn it on and fuck with it or whatever, and you might leave it on, and then this might be up and it'll fuck it up, because this randomizes the phase, and the phase is basically where it starts on the waveform, so if you have the random set up all the way, then it's going to start at a different point of the waveform every single time you hit a note, which plays the kick. Now, there's two ways to make your bass sound of the kick. You can either change one of these oscillators to fucking anything you want. I know this dude, that, that's funny 2011. And then, since that's high-pitched, you can add sub, and that will make it have sub bass, and then you can make a kick out of that. Or you could just make it really low-pitched without using the sub oscillator. And now an explanation on what pitches to use when making kicks. Do not use C. Do not use C sharp, not D, not D sharp, E, you, I guess, F, I guess, and anything above that, you're fine. Because, you see, if you put this note here on C2, it's going to sound too low pitched. I keep forgetting to change the BPM. So yeah, C is usually a note that you want to avoid. C sharp isn't any better, D is a bit better, but still not good. D sharp is, uh, it's, yeah. E is getting there, it's it's alright. F is good, F sharp is good, G is better, G sharp is better. A is probably one of the best pitches to use when making kicks because it's going to hit a frequency range in terms of the sub bass that most people will hear no matter like what sound system it's on, even your like two dollar dollar general headphones. A sharp is okay, B sharp is like on the brink of a bit too high pitched, and then C is too high pitched. That's in my opinion though, like you could just make whatever kick pitch, you can make whatever kick you want in any pitch you want, that's just my personal thing. Okay, I, I just chose G sharp because, okay. Do the funny gear, click track, as with every other tutorial I have. So now you're gonna wanna play your kick, like loop it, and you're gonna wanna hear how it sounds while you make it. One week later. Okay, so this is like my, my fifth attempt at trying to explain um, how I made this stupid kick. Slot one. Fruity Reverb 2. It's always going to be Fruity Reverb 2 because that adds your stereo information. Turn down the wet. Keep the early reflections the same. Really keep all of this the same for now. Slot 2, Fab Filter Pro Q3. Do a point and then shape, low cut. Change it from stereo to side. And this is our stereo setup. And now for slot 3, we're going to do an EQ and we're going to start making our, our funny, funny sounds. Take any of these points as long as it's not 1 or 7. I mean, you could still change this to like that and uh, whatever. Take this point down here, change the bandwidth so it's all the way down. And now look at this note and see what this note is. So this one is G sharp. Go back here into the EQ, right click the point, go to key, and then find that note. So G sharp. Four and five work the best. Um, six is, eh, it's, it, it's okay. It usually makes peep kicks, but whatever. I usually just go with the fifth one. 
and you can hear how this this sounds like a higher pitch of the sub bass note which is what this is add a point onto that maybe not as resonant though you don't want to make resonant point upon resonant point that's just asking for messed up kicks now here is where multiple peaks come in because you can take one of these points and you can turn down the bandwidth and as you move this point closer to the main peak the louder spots are where it will work the most reliably however some spots are better than others in my opinion just here As you could probably tell, the loudest one was the one that's an octave lower than this. That one works probably the most out of all these, but there are a few in between that octave that kind of gives the sort of Dimitri K style like sound of kick. I, I don't know how to explain it. It's it's the resonant pitch is on a different pitch than the main like sub note. So for example, this frequency right here, six one eight. That is. 618, 618, 618. That looks to be about D sharp. Anyways, whatever. You can do this whole thing with putting this point on the louder bits. I'll start with this one, which is an octave lower than this one. And then maybe add a third one. Okay, now we've got our trifecta of fuckery here. Slot 4, Wave Shaper, and the, yeah. Slot 5, another EQ. This one is where all of the important bit comes in. This is like what I've learned through another person's method. I'm not going to say his name, but I'll put his profile picture somewhere on the screen here. So boost the hell out of the sub, as you do. Boost the hell out of the highs uh, with this specific one. Always use this one. At least this is what I've learned. And then take any one of these points and go... Not, not like that, just make sure it doesn't sound like shit. So you can actually make like the Dark Horse style kicks much easier by just moving this point a bit lower. So as you can see the heat map kind of focuses on this bit right here, but if you move it a bit lower, then that can work too. So I'll, I'll just do that for now, I don't know. Going back into here, we're going to add sub bass. And then this point is the one we're going to automate because it's before distortion. Create automation clip and then make your funny slide thing that I've shown in every other tutorial. And then a soft clipper. And this is optional, but I choose to do it because, I don't know, I, I like to get a little bit of the highs and stuff out. So I just do this on this EQ specifically. Um... Because it's a different one than EQ2. It kind of, I don't know, it sounds different when it comes to the higher frequencies. Sometimes EQ2 tends to like get rid of some of the higher frequencies or kind of make them sound muffled in a way. This one doesn't. And then soft clip. And I'll show you the difference. It's a very, very, very slight difference, but it helps. And now I'm going to go full Dimitri K mode and put these two main peaks into this middle man here. Usually this makes a peak that's stupid loud, so I'll just do that and then move this a bit lower. Also, you don't have to make your uh, automation clip just like this. You can instead make another point like this and make this all the way up high like that. And then, of course, you can do the, the funny, uh, fake French core kick. So yeah, there's a lot of possibilities with that. And making kick rolls with this is super easy, too. Because all you have to do is highlight this to the end of the kick and the automation clip, of course. And just do Control b and Control b and Control b and then Control b and then Control b and then Control b and, and then this, right here, is where you can do some funny stuff. Right-click the pattern, make unique, double-click it to go into the piano roll, and then move this pitch higher into here.
Make sure it's a lot more resonant than this one that's down here. And then copy this, paste it, and then put it over here. And just do do this, do a thing, do a kick roll thing, and then do that. And there you go. And you can change so much stuff in just this serum thing. You can change everything from the EQs to the fucking way you automate the kicks to the serum thing itself. I really suggest for you guys to experiment with this because that is what got me to here. So yeah, serum kick done. I will do this now. Okay, and now citrus. Yes, this is another recording because I'm doing it bit by bit so I don't get burnt out. So that's probably why I sound like different in three different sections or like four or five different sections of this video. But yeah, let, let's get started on uh, Citrus. So it looks pretty complicated with all these OP, OP2, OP3, OP4, you know, filter shit. Really, it's, it's not that hard at all. All you need to do is focus on OP1. But first you have to go to presets and turn on default at the very top. This will reset it so it's not that weird like, so essentially what we're going to try to do in Citrus is make a bass drum, specifically one that kind of looks like a 909, somewhat like this. So to do that, we're going to turn sh up to like that, maybe we turn tin to, uh, to something like that, Suk to something like that, maybe, maybe turn down tin a bit. And you don't really have to mess with sun, but you can if you want to. Also, yeah, the, the, the real names for these are in the top left, shape tension, skew, and sign shaper. So that is one of the two main things done. The second thing they have to do is up here, go to pitch, and then envelope. I already got it selected because that was the last thing that was open for me. Click enable envelope. Move this point all the way to the top left. Get rid of this point. And just letting you know, if you don't, it's going to sound like this. Without it, it sounds like this. So right click this point and then do copy value. Click tempo so it's by tempo. Drag this point horizontally to where this black bar is and then paste value. Or you can do it a bit earlier. It just depends on where you want the slope to stop. I'll do it right here. And then just drag this down so it resembles a kick. You can also fuck around with PE which is pitch envelope. So we're going to treat this exactly like the serum kick, except we're going to have to put it down on like the second octave, maybe even the first actually. Yeah, I'm going to put this on F, just a random note. Pattern 5, make sure that's selected. Put it in the playlist and then cut that, boom, make sure it's on song and go into here gear and then track and start building your kick from here. Now I'm going to experiment with another thing on this one specifically. Another way you can shape your kicks is to do slot 2 fast dist, slot 3 parametric EQ2, and then slot 4 wave shaper. Uh, no, actually, I keep forgetting to do the reverb. Okay, okay, reverb is done basically. Pro Q3, do this thing. So what adding that fast disc does is you can add different frequencies on here and it sounds kind of different in a way. I'll just show it to you guys. So start carving this thing out. Also a uh, wave shaper, of course. Now that I've made the base of the kick, what I want to do is mess around with this and show you guys what this does. And that, that's, yeah. After the wave shaper, of course, do a parametric EQ2. Maybe at this point, mess around with the reverb 2 and Pro Q3. The cool thing about kicks made with Citrus is that you can actually just mess around with the feel of the kick just through this tension bit. And also the, the P. So of course if you think a, a point sounds good here for like the punch, and if you think this sounds good for bass, you could just do this. And 
intake rolls are pretty much the same as serum. Just do that, and then control B, 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 B. This one will be different. Honestly, you could do this with these two. Just listen to my stuff and see what I do, and then see if you can build off that. Or really other people's stuff, not just mine. Also, another thing you can do is you could just make your kick rolls in the piano roll, and then put them in here as a pattern. I'll do this with the FX kicks. And easy. And now for the OG method that I've used since like, what, 2020. So I'm not gonna go all stupid crazy and make the kick out of a hi-hat or whatever. I'm just gonna use the 909 kick here. Now this does take a bit more post-processing, but sometimes it makes for really good sounding kicks. So you're gonna wanna chop up a bit of the bass here and then, and then maybe that's a bit too high pitch. And now what you're gonna wanna do is to just keep doing this, keep making that go, go all the way over there. Record this. No. Okay. Click trim and then uh, you don't have to click normalize. Drag the copy sample thing from there to here. Now here's the very, very important part. Open up in sampler, click track, and in slot one, do G tune. Now G tune is a free VST. I'll link to it in the description. Essentially what it is, is it's a tuner. So just play out this thing and see what this reads. Also, this can help if you detach it, then go into here and boom, it's still here. So F sharp, but it's off by 20 cents. So you're gonna go into this again, and then you're gonna turn this pitch knob up here to the point where this thing reads zero. Or at least as close as you can get to zero. And also make sure you turn mode from auto to E3 mono. So that's about exactly F sharp. And now we're just gonna build off this. So we're gonna make this a beat long, cut that, get rid of G tune, and start building the kick. Forgetting to put the reverb. I hate this. And soft clip as usual. Slot 8 for the parametric EV2. Also, I, I realized I didn't do it on this. I just didn't think I needed it. And there's your kick. So this next one is also relating to samples, but for some it might be easier to understand. So take a long bass sound, kind of like, I don't know, filtered kick. Open it up and then turn the mole knob up all the way and change mode to E3 mono. Now crop it to a bit of the kick that isn't really a kick, it's more of just a bass. Maybe pitch it down a bit. You can also use the weird time stretched punch at the start, just a bit of it. So like this bit right here. And we build off this. God, if I had a nickel for every single time I forgot to do this reverb to pro key three thing during this recording, I would I would have I would be a millionaire. So this one was kind of a pain in the ass, but it's easier with distorted kicks that you find in like sample packs and stuff. I'm just gonna grab one from like a free sample pack.
Point proven. Also, I guess I could just link to that pack. It's a free one anyway, so whatever. And that's about it, I think. Um, I think we might be forgetting one, actually. No, don't tell anyone, but I think I figured out how the Dark Horror makes his funny helicopter kicks that he's been making in his newer stuff. And also, if, if there's like a tick before it starts, get, get rid of that. Track, slot one, EQ two, do highs. Open up in sampler, change the pitch range to six or so, maybe nine, I don't know. Right click the pitch knob, create automation clip, and build off this. Fruity wave shaper, of course. Slot 3, parametric EQ2, for fuck's sake, reverb. Now I know you guys can build off of this and make something better than whatever the hell I just made, but I'm pretty sure this is the way he does it. And that is it. Five kicks all in one video. I'm now going to play them all at once, get my merch, experiment with these things, and do do good do good things. Be good person, do things. Sorry, I don't find it. Stop the